The Launch Heavy Keyboard from System76. This is a very cool, unique keyboard with lots of customization and all kinds of things. So let's jump into it. Starting off here, we do have the Launch Keyboard box, which is very cool, very fancy. And if we open it up, we do get greeted by this ready for launch keyboard card. I've already taken the launch out because I have been using it now for roughly six months or so. I've been using this keyboard for a while. It's really an amazing keyboard. You see the, the physical keyboard itself right here. There's a few things that jump out. You got two space bars. It's not an accident. There, there are two space bars. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. The other piece is it's, you can't really obviously tell too much, but it is solid. Like this is a giant hunk of aluminum that has just been milled out and they put all the electronics into. Heavy is a very fitting name for it. This keyboard is called the Launch, but there are three different versions and this one is called the Launch Heavy. It's the largest one they have. And I'll tell you this, it's a chunky boy. It definitely earns that title of Heavy. How much does it earn that title? Let's find out. Our standard Logitech wireless keyboard here. This one is the model that somebody picks up at Office Depot and nobody gives a crap of what it's actually called. One pound, 4.6 ounces. I'm actually surprised it's even a pound. Now for the launch heavy. So two pounds, 11.2 ounces. So it doesn't sound like a whole lot in weight difference, but let's take a look at this. Look at the surface area. This is a much larger keyboard, right? And also when you're just holding this thing, it is robust. Like I said, this thing is like milled aluminum. It's really cool, honestly, that it weighs as much as it does. Obviously, if you put in your backpack a lot and stuff like that, eh, you might want a lighter keyboard. But for sitting on your desk and it has really solid rubber on the back that keeps it from sliding around, this thing just is planted and I never have any issues with it moving when I don't want it to. You can configure this keyboard uh, when you buy it with four different choices of switches. Mine are brown switches. Other physical things about this keyboard, you have these feet, I guess we'll call them, and they are magnetic and they stick right on to the keyboard, nice and secure, and it's it's very like tight tolerances. Like they, they've done a good job of matching everything up. If we can take these off, it does sit nice and flat. So for the three of you who actually want to type with a super flat keyboard, there's that option. Uh, but for the other 99.999% of us who want it properly elevated a little bit, just like that. And it's got a good amount of tilt. I would like it to have a little more tilt maybe. So if they had some other height options, that would be kind of cool. Maybe if it went down like another couple positions, you know, a couple more places so that it could it could tilt the keyboard up a little bit more. When you get the keyboard, it comes with a really nice uh, braided USB-C to type A 3.0 cable. I think this might be 3.0 gen or 3.1 gen one. Yeah, it's down there. Really nice cable and you need this for a reason because you'll also notice back here we have USB ports. You have the main one in the center. This main port is your connection to your computer. These other ones, it's a USB dock essentially, and it's a very fast USB dock. They did not skimp on this. I have transferred video files from my CFAS cards to my server. It's just lightning fast. It's as quick as if I was plugged directly into the computer itself. So they did a really good job of making sure that this IO is actually nice and performant. And on the note of the cable, they do have type C to type C. So if you are going directly into a type C port on your computer, there's that option as well. The other piece that it comes with is an actual keycap puller. So that, like I said, is very customizable. So we will go ahead and come over a key and we can just pull it right off. And so as you can see there, we have our cherry brown switches. And like I said, there's four different options, but I wanted tactile and silent. I cannot stand non-tactile and I cannot stand them being loud. Uh, the other thing is they gave us a bunch of different colors here. We got blue, red, and brown keycap colors. And so I chose blue because that's kind of my color scheme. We can just take, you know, the red one put it right on there. But I like the blues, so we'll go back to that. The other thing is they give you a bunch of different options when it comes to the super keys. That super key has the System76 logo on it right now, but they do give you a bunch of different options. So nothing too crazy or uh, out of the ordinary here, but it is really cool that they uh, are giving you so many options, even in the form of the super key. Now, like I said, there is two space bars. Seems a little weird, and you know what? It is. Quite frankly, I wanted to go back to a single Spacebar. I contacted System76 and asked if there was any way to make it just a single spacebar, and they said no, that is part of the design. But since I asked that question, I've had a little bit of time to think. 
And that's actually not a bad idea because like I said, this is fully customizable and we'll dive into the software in a second. But if you have one of these keys as space and the other one as a backspace or some other function, you know, play, pause, whatever you want to have this secondary uh, space bar for, it's pretty cool that it's right there. So as much as I'd have uh, a desire to go back to a single key space bar, it's cool that it's there and it's unique among the market. That's for sure. They're trying to be unique. They're trying to be different. They're trying to be uh, unlike everybody else. They're trying to be, what's another one we can use? Another thing that sticks out to me is quite odd on this keyboard is definitely the placement of the arrow keys. One, they're not arrows. They wrote it out. And personally, I would have liked arrow keys. Being written out is not that big of a deal breaker for me, but the biggest thing to me is you see this shift key right here? That's pretty small. And the arrow keys are right next to it. What happens is I'm over here, I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing, and then I wanna go and hit shift T to make it uppercase for instance, that up arrow is right next to it. And I very often find myself, even with using this keyboard for quite a while now, find myself accidentally hitting the up arrow and suddenly I'm typing in a different place on the document. Kind of frustrating. I do wish that they had moved these over to more standard thing, because you'll notice it's quite compact, but I would have liked a little bit extra width so they could have moved those arrow keys over just a little bit, but I have gotten mostly used to it. It's becoming less and less of a problem for me. We do have a full number pad and that's really cool. Uh, we also have, you know, uh, media controls here as well. I mapped these out actually to be my volume controls uh, because I don't really need to skip or anything like that. And that's pretty cool functionality to have. So let's jump into software. So we've got the Launch Heavy hooked up to my Thelio Mira, which we've got a review coming very soon, so make sure you subscribe to No Plan. And here we go. So let's jump into the software itself to configure the keyboard. So it is the keyboard, System76 keyboard configurator. You have to type in a password. Don't really know why, it's a keyboard. And there's our keyboard. So we'll full screen that. And so we got the full layout here. So it recognizes that it's the Launch Heavy. We can click on Configure Keyboard. And here's what's cool. So like I said, my controls over here for play, pause, skip, everything like that, I have changed that to be volume up and volume down. By default, they are skip, forward, skip, back. So what we can do to change that is we can click on say volume up right here. This is my, my key right there. As you can see, it is indeed doing that. And so whenever we hit one of these keys, so we, get, we hit space, hit the other space, you can see that they are getting lit up on the screen so you can see exactly which key it is. So we'll click on volume down. We can come down here. So we've got also the options to mute. Uh, there's all the different navigation buttons, symbols, uh, screen up, screen down, all these different things. It's all configured right here. There's even LED on and off. So if we were to, which key did I have? Yep, so if we hit this now, See how the lights on the keyboard actually turn on and off? Super nice. Uh, and then also we could do uh, LED brighten if we wanted to. And then we can go LED brighten and now it brightens it up. So we've got all this customization right here in the software and it's absolutely incredible. It's very self-explanatory. I'm not gonna go too much into details, but all your function keys, all of this stuff right here. Now, one function of this keyboard that is really cool is the ability to create layers. And what is a layer on a keyboard? It's very simple. You see up here, we have layer one through four. We can go to a different layer, and now you can see here, it's LED on, LED off, it, all these different other things that these key, keys are now mapped to. So I could set a key on my keyboard to change the layer, and then I would be able to start hitting other keys. So basically it's a way to have macro layer after macro layer after macro layer. And everything that you do within the software is stored locally on the keyboard. So when I make these changes in the software, that's permanent. It's on this keyboard, that is what it does. So I could take this from my desktop, hook it into my laptop, and it's got all the same customizations. So with the LEDs, right now I've got it on horizontal scan, so it's slowly going through the RGB color palette all the way across the keyboard. I can also increase that speed. So now, you can see here, everything is happening in real time. Uh, Jack, let's go ahead and turn off the lights. So now with the lights off, we can see it a lot easier. So like I said, you can increase the speed and the animation is a lot faster. Um, saturation, we can basically make it just a white keyboard, you know? So if we if it's too much color, we can just kind of make it a little bit, a little bit more white there. And we can, of course, change the brightness up and down. So then we have a bunch of different backgrounds. We have the cosmic background. It's just going through all the different colors. Per layer, solid color. There's so many other things that's really cool. One of my favorites, meteor shower. So what we're able to do is go in Let's make the layer animation. Anytime we type, it splashes across the keyboard. 
It's so, so cool. Clearly a whole other reason why you buy this keyboard is not just for the hardware, it's also for the software. This application is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, so no matter what platform you're on, you can use it. And if you're a free BSD weirdo, yes, you can compile it for your operating system as well. And like I said, everything is stored directly on the board. The other thing, of course, that's really cool is having essentially this bay on the back of the keyboard. So right on this keyboard, I've got all the inputs to my computer and it's not cluttering up at the front of my computer or something like that. So would I recommend buying the Launch Heavy? Absolutely. It is an amazing keyboard and I will say this though, it is a premium product. It can cost upwards of $300 for this keyboard. Sounds like a lot, but I will say this. My last keyboard was not nearly this nice. It was actually a Compact Presario's uh, default keyboard that came in the box. I used that thing for like 11 years, and then I upgraded to this one. So I definitely saved my money in a lot of ways by just using the same keyboard forever. But also, this keyboard, I'm probably gonna keep using it for like the next 10, 15 years. So when you talk about the value of it and the fact that it's built so solid and the customization of it, if anything breaks, I can get new parts for it, it service it, having the highly customizable software, and especially if you're a Linux user, having that kind of functionality right there, but it also works on Windows and Mac. It is just an amazing keyboard and well worth the money. I would highly recommend it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and keep an eye out to no plan for more future videos. Catch you next time. All right, launch keyboard uh, review take two. Is the secondary camera actually rolling? It's so great to have a, a nice refreshing LaCroix while we're filming this. And I'm so glad that I know that there is a difference between LaCroix and their flavors, like we found out in this video. Click it to find out. Yeah, that'd be it. and that'd be it. So that's a wrap on the keyboard video. Yeah.